Hi, my name is Paul and this is Ken. Uh, Ken is 74 years old and uh, we've been seeing Ken on and off for the last couple of years for this unusual um, right-sided discomfort. Um, and this started about how many years ago, Ken? I'd say at least five years ago. About five years yeah. ago. Um, when does it seem to bother you the most? Well, at, fir at first it, it, it uh, bothered me when I was walking uh, like in the woods where I, I work. And uh, it never bothered me on the treadmill. I walked two hours on the treadmill at six miles an hour. It never bothered me. But as it's progressed to now, it's happening uh, every day, uh, almost every day. And I, I don't have to be in a woods. It could be even flat ground. But yep. never sitting. Okay. Um, you're also quite active. You do CrossFit also, and you have really no problems with that. And you also do uh, some other exercises at a, at a local um, gym. gym, and uh, really no problems with that. Never so, had a problem exercising. So we've really determined that walking seems to be the biggest <coughs> factor here. Um, and when he gets his pain, it's very isolated to the lateral side of his hip. So early on, um, we were very <laughs> suspicious that he had um, maybe... Uh, greater trochanteric bursitis, but he was not tender in the bursa. Um, he really had no other tenderness around his hip. We uh, checked his reflexes, his sensation, his distal muscle strength, and he is extremely strong. He has a negative straight leg raise test. Um, we were also somewhat suspicious that maybe he was having some neurogenic claudication um, because when he would walk it would get worse. But what we found interesting is that when he bent forward, it did not relieve his discomfort. Um, so he did have an MRI of his lumbar spine. That came back normal. He was complaining of some uh, grinding in the hip joint, and he does have limited range of motion on the right side. Uh, I cannot do a diagonal to chest as well as he can on the other side because he's restricted in the joint. So he had an arthrogram of the hip, and that came back relatively <coughs> normal. He's also had an EMG. Uh, in this side and uh, that came back normal and he's also had an ankle brachial index done on this leg and that came back normal. So um, about four weeks ago Ken uh, required uh, stents in his uh, heart, three stents and so we started to wonder maybe he's having um, vascular claudication in his leg. Most often times it happens um, you know down in the lower part of the leg. So what we did was we assessed his foot posture, which we'll do right now. So I'm going to have you go ahead and stand right up. And if you take a look, you'll notice that he has a pes planus type posture. He's retroverted a little bit. And as a result of having a pes planus foot, the glute medius has to work harder. So we started to imagine, is the glute medius overworking and just getting strained because of his pes planus type foot. So we've ordered up some custom orthotics and we're going to be fitting him with those today. Uh, I'll let you sit back down. Then we would have him walk and we stressed him pretty hard and had him walk to a point where this became really unbearable, right? Oh, and right. describe what that pain is like. It's a, it's, a, <clears throat> it's a very dull pain. It's not a sharp pain at all. And it's a, uh, constant once it starts it doesn't stop until I actually physically stop moving it's a low almost like if you're doing a, say like bicep curls into a burnout when you get to the burnout you feel that burn so I'd also say it's like a burn yes low ache and burn yes and then you when feel like your leg would start to become weak oh, also I, as a result I, I could I would stop me and he'd lose control and he would develop more of a Trendelenburg type gait on this side the other thing that was interesting is we would flex him forward after he was in that situation and it did not get better. So then we ordered up a, a CT angiogram, um, basically from the abdominal aorta uh, down, and um, they found a considerable blockage of the superior gluteal artery that supplies the glute medius. Uh, they did find some uh, ancillary uh, blood vessels that were trying to help, you know, uh, with the area. So basically what's happening is he's putting his glute medius on demand, asking for blood flow. He's getting vascular claudication isolated to that particular muscle because the superior gluteal artery is occluded. Um, and therefore it doesn't get better until he rests it. 
Um, so he is getting a little bit of blood flow to it and he does well with most activities, but if he isolates the glute medius, it really gives him that ischemia in that muscle and a significant amount of pain. Um, so he's going to be seeing, we're going to put him into a pair of orthotics so that he doesn't pronate as much and his glute medius doesn't work as hard. Um, he's going to be seeing a vascular specialist to see if there's anything they can do like stenting or they might even have to do anticoagulation anti <laughs> therapy. Um, and um, we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. But a uh, very interesting presentation. You don't see this very often, but I think we need to always remember that vascular claudication can look like neurogenic claudication. And asking the right questions at the right time can be really important in uh, trying to uh, get to the bottom of it. Thanks.